Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a transaction in the new web forms. Um, so I'm going to start by going to Toronto Stratus and clicking the web forms link here. And that's going to take us to the sign in page. And it's going to take us to the new web forms. Uh, so in case you didn't know, uh, new web forms will officially be launching in January 2020. So in the new year, as of December 16th, so pretty much the end of this week, you will no longer be able to create transactions in the old legacy version of web forms and you'll have to use a new one. So it's coming up really quick. Um, you will be able to still access the old version to view your old transactions. You just won't be able to create new ones. So today I'm going to start by creating a brand new transaction and I'm going to walk you through the steps. So the first thing we're going to be able to do is we can do create transaction by clicking this create transaction button here. If you don't have this button, uh, what you can do is you can press the unlock dashboard and it's going to allow you to customize the dashboard a little bit. So let's say that button's not there. We'll have the button under create and we'll just be able to drag and drop it and move it wherever you want. When that button's done, you can just press lock again and it'll be there. The other way you can do create transaction is if you were to go to transactions, you can click on this. Or if we go to the side menu here, we can click on transactions. Um, what it's going to do here is give me a list of all the transactions I've already created. And there's a few buttons along the top to help you sort through. So for one thing, I can help filter. So let's say I only want to do com um, condo leases. And it's going to show me only condo leases I've done. I can check that off and then it's going to go show them all. I can also sort by transaction type or sort by closing date or all sorts of, of things. I'm just going to do date created. And finally, we're going to have the add button, which we're going to use right now. So we're just going to create transaction and press add. I should point out that any transaction you've already created, if you click on these three little dots, You'll be able to go back into it, go to the dashboard, edit the forms, checklists, view the history, everything. So I'm just going to press the add button and now I'm going to create a brand new transaction. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, type in the name of my transaction kit. So I'm just going to do one, two, three, testing. And let's say I'll put my client's name. Um, okay, there we go. And for the template, now if you click on templates, you notice that there are a few templates already here, even if you haven't already created a template. This is because the office has created some templates for you to use. You don't have to use these. They're more of a guide. Um, so if you want to use them, you can, they're there for you. Uh, otherwise, you can just create it from scratch or you can go in and create your own templates. There's another video for that as well. Uh, for this sample, I'm not going to use any templates right now just so that we can show you how to build it up from scratch. Now the type is very important because that's going to allow you to filter through everything later. So I'm going to do, let's say, um, a condo sale. And finally, under import data, this is where I'll put my MLS number. So I'm going to have to click on Toronto and then I would put in my MLS number. Now, if I click, uh, click on Toronto and I don't put an MLS number, it's not actually going to let me create it. See, it's going to give me an error saying the field is required. So the best thing to do is just use select source, leave that blank, and then you'll be able to press create. There is an option to use the wizard, uh, but for this sample, we're not going to use a wizard and we're just going to do it manually. We find the wizard to be a little bit iffy, so I'm just going to skip it. Um, and now it's going to take us to the details tab of our new transaction. So if I were to put in my MLS number, this is where all that information is going to be plugged in already. But because we didn't, we're going to have to manually put everything in. So I'm going to put in oops, my street number, testing road, let's say, and I can just tab through all of this. And I'm just pressing tab right now so that I can go through all my fields. Um, this would be where I'd put my exclusive property type. We'll do condo, legal description, everything that you want to populate through the form. So I'm going to put my purchase price as well as my deposit. 
and an additional deposit. Okay, now I can add a contact as well. And that would be if I click on contacts here. Oh, actually, I'm going to save this first by checking this little check mark off. Okay, and now I'm going to add my contacts. So this is where I would be able to put my client contacts in. I do add, add an existing contact. And I would just press it. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, create new transaction contact. And this is where I'll be able to put my buyer. And I can put my client's email, which I don't necessarily need because most of you hopefully will be using DocuSign to get it signed. And I can add them to the address book if I want, but I'm just going to put their name right now. Okay. And so then my client's going to be there as well. And if you want, I can add the seller as well. And legal name. Keep in mind, if you have put in an MLS number, you won't need to do any of this. Okay, so now that's going to take me down to forms. I'm going to click on forms on the side here. And at this point, I'm just going to add all the forms that I would possibly need for this transaction. Now, please keep in mind that any forms I add, take with a grain of salt. This isn't my strong suit, so I'm hoping that you realtors will be able to know what forms to actually use. So just like the old forms, um, it's going to give you a list of a whole bunch of them. So I'm just going to click on Ontario, and it's going to give me a whole list of them. Or I can search. So agreement of purchase and sale. I can try and type in Form 101. And here we go, condo resale. Now, if you notice, there's a few different versions. Uh, this is based on the number of schedules. Now, I prefer to just do one schedule and add additional ones later. Um, just because I find if you do two, three, four, it's just going to be like four Schedule A's, and they're all Schedule A's. So it's best to just start with one schedule, and then you can add additional schedules after that. Keep in mind, if I want to type in schedule as well, um, we should be able to find here I guess schedule to agreement of purchase and sale and this one actually has a blank mark so if I want to do schedule B schedule C schedule D I'd want to use these okay so I'm just gonna add a few other forms that I could possibly need so the buyer representation agreement um, let's see here Okay, I'm going to do working with a realtor. Um, what else is one that you need? The FinTrack, I guess. Okay, and you're going to see that they're all kind of showing up in my basket here. So I have five forms. Once I've added all the ones I want, I'm going to press add, and they're all going to be listed under forms. So I can always go back in and add more. Or what I can also do is if I click on these three little dots, it's going to kind of show me what I can do with each of the forms. So I can preview it, download it, rename it, uh, as well as send the individual form to DocuSign. Uh, but we're not going to do anything right now. We just want to edit the form. So I can press edit here, or if I just click on the agreement, it'll take me to the edit page. So editing your form is pretty simple, kind of similar to the old one as well. You have a few different icons up here to help you. So first, if I click on any of these fields, I can just start typing. And you can see that because I added my contacts to this transaction, they're already here, as well as any of the information I put in the details tab. And if I were to scroll down to the schedule, we can see that it's populated through here on, on every form that I add. Okay, now if I click on this little book here, it's going to allow me to skip ahead to each page. Um, of course, as long as I tab through, it'll allow me to do that as well. Okay, the other thing is if I click on this little, I can zoom in, zoom out if I want to get more of an overview. And it also allows me to use the strike out form. So for example, if I say, 
pesto coverings. And then I add the strikeout. I can always strike those out. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And then I can continue typing in. I don't know. Okay, so let's go down to the schedule because we'll talk about adding clauses. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this blank spot and now I can kind of start typing whatever clause I want. If I want to add clauses, I can just click on the clauses up here and I can start searching for a specific clause and it's going to give me an option to click on my personal clauses. So if you've created any personal clauses, the files that you've created here, you'll just be able to check off any of those. Um, if I want to go to system clauses, I'll be able to view all the regular system clauses. So I'm just going to choose a bunch because I want to show you what happens when I get too many. So these aren't going to make any sense. I just want to show you a whole bunch of them. Same thing. We're going to have it all in the basket. I'm going to press OK. And it's going to list all my clauses. And we have a little scrolly bar right here. So when you get this scrolly bar, that means you've added too many to one page. It doesn't auto flow over into the next page. So we also notice that I only have one schedule A. So if I need to add an extra one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press add page. And it's going to say yes. And it's going to add another schedule at the bottom. So now if I scroll down, we can see that was my initial page. And now there's another schedule A with the flow. So what I'm going to do, just because I have all this overflow, I'm just going to copy and paste a few extras that I don't need. I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to delete these. I'm going to go down to the new one, right click, paste. And now both pages don't have the little scrolly bar, which is a good sign. That means when I print it out, it's not going to be cut off. And of course, I can always go in, write more, etc. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can always change the font type and that'll change it throughout the entire offer. Um, it's up to you if you want to do this. Uh, whatever you think is easier to read as well as you can change the font color. Please don't change it to something like, you know, yellow would be awful. <laughs> Keep it at black. Um, okay, so a few other things. If you want to move from form to form, you can do that and just click on the next form that you want to edit. And if you just click on that, it'll take me to the next one. And this one I can put in like my Schedule B and put my deposit information. And I can also go, and if I go to all my other forms, you'll notice that that information should be populated. That was a bad example. Hold on. It should be populated in already with my client information. Yeah, see, the stuff should all be here already. And you can just fill in what you need to. So when you're all done filling out all of your forms, uh, you can send that individual form to DocuSign, but we're not going to do that yet. I'm just going to click on File. And you don't need to save. Uh, this all saves automatically for you. This save button will just download it to your own desktop and it'll only download the individual form you're on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press exit and that's going to take me back to the overall dashboard. So what I'm going to be able to do now is let's say I want to send all my forms to DocuSign. I'm going to check off each individual one or what I can do is I can just press. That's going to check off all my forms and I'm going to click on the basket. And so once I click on the basket, all these forms are going to kind of give me a way to check out, so to speak. So I can copy all of them. I can download all of them to my desktop as a zip file, print them, or I can download and save them all as a PDF. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them all to DocuSign. If you do not have the DocuSign button there already, you're just going to want to make sure that you link your DocuSign account, which I can show you how to do in another video. And same thing as the old web forms, it's going to take you into your DocuSign. Um, it's going to ask if you want to do any matching templates. I am not going to use those. Um, and I can just add my recipients, put in email address. Whoops. 
And same thing, just drag and drop where my client needs to initial and sign. You get the idea and then press send. Hopefully everyone at this point knows how to do this. And then it's just going to take me right back into my web forms. And we can see that the transaction that I just created will be on the top here. So I'll be able to go back into it at any time, access it. Um, the other thing I should point out is you can add individual forms as well, not just like forms from um, Korea or Korea. So I can always go to documents, which you can also click on documents here and upload uh, documents from your desktop, from your computer, or one of the things is if you do copy from documents, these are documents you've already uploaded into your shared document folder. So if I go to my folders there, I have a folder called Remax condos. And let's say I want to add like my schedule D or a promo form. I can upload these into the transaction. These forms aren't going to be able, you won't be able to edit them, but you can send them off to DocuSign as well um, and just keep them together as a package. So I'm just going to click on Doc Dashboard and that'll give me an overview of everything. So that's it. Um, hopefully if you have any questions, you come to the training or let any of our staff know and we'll be able to help you. Thank you.